Hey guys, so in my last Twitch stream, I was asked a bunch of questions about like tips, tricks, guides, stuff like that. And I decided to go back into the VOD, write down a bunch of the questions that I was asked throughout the stream, and make a video for you guys. Everything that I found so far is PC related, you know, you find tips and tricks and guides and stuff like that, it's all PC. So I decided to make one specifically for console, everything you see in this video is doable with a regular factory PlayStation controller. I myself play with what is known as a Battle Beaver controller, I feel like I have to tell you this just so you know. Uh, it's basically the same thing as a scuff, but instead of paddles on the back, it's got buttons. So my X and my circle button, my, my jump and my crouch, are on the back of my controller. Other than that, everything that I show you in this video can be done with a factory Sony controller, okay? Um, on top of that, everything I'm going to share is in no particular order. I've got hero specific stuff, just regular gameplay mechanics, animation cancels, just a bunch of everything. So let's just get right into it. So first I'm going to show you how to animation cancel and swap your weapon faster. So when you're in a gunfight and you're up close and personal, the first instinct is to just reload your weapon and then continue fighting. But that takes a really long time. The next thing to do is to rather reload your weapon, swap your weapon by simply clicking triangle, right? Well, there's a fast way to swap your weapon. It is very simple to do. All you need to do is fire your weapon until you run out of ammo. Then you're going to click triangle to swap your weapon. And at the same time, you're going to click your crouch button. By clicking the crouch button after you swap weapons, you cancel the animation of swapping your weapons and you instantly pull out your second one. So there's also two options for crouching, which I need to touch on. There's toggle and hold. By having it on toggle, you're going to have to click the crouch button twice. Otherwise, you're going to be in the crouch position, which you probably won't want. If you have it on hold, then you, your character will just barely move. He looks like this. So shoot your weapon, tap triangle, keep holding R2 throughout the entire thing, and you'll swap and keep shooting really, really, really fast. It's actually super good to get used to. You should definitely get used to it in the middle of a gunfight. It's a little awkward at first, and it's... I can see it being really hard if you're not playing Claw or if you don't have uh, a special controller like a Scuff or a Battle Beaver like myself, but it is 100% doable. I can do it if I'm just playing Claw or if you have a different controller scheme, you'll definitely be able to do it too. The next I want to briefly touch on is the flying technique when you're flying off of balloons to fly farther. There's actually two ways you can do this on console. You see PC players do it all the time, but on console you can do it two separate ways. So the first, all you need to do is go up the balloon like you would normally, fly like you would normally, but when your character model puts his feet down to the ground as if he's about to start landing, you're going to look straight up in the air with your right stick. That's all you need to do. So every time your character puts his feet to the ground, look up with your right stick and you'll fly, you'll fly much farther than you would normally. The second actually works way better than the first, but you have a little less control over your character. So before you go up, right, you're going to look straight up in the sky and then you're going to hold L2. Okay. So straight up in the sky, hold L2. And now you're going to be able to look around. So your character model is actually looking straight up in the sky right now. And you're just in spectator mode. Now, all you need to do now is just guide yourself with your left stick into mountains or bigger buildings and you'll start gliding just as you see here so look straight up in the sky hold l2 to go into a uh, free roam or whatever you want to call it like a spectator mode and you just guide yourself with your left stick and you'll be good to go so the next tip that i want to give you is specifically for mirage so the way mirage works is if you have his ultimate ability and you click l1 and r1 at the same time you will spit out a bunch of clones of yourself decoys and they just stand there and they don't do anything right it's super underwhelming it's not a very good ultimate ability the best part about it is that you're invisible but if you're playing against a really good team then they're gonna know that you're invisible anyways so here's what i like to do I pay attention to my surroundings during each fight and I pay attention like, okay, I might use my ultimate here, I might not. If you find an elevated platform such as this rock, it could be much smaller than this, it doesn't matter. If you find a rock and you use your ultimate while you're elevated, every decoy that falls off the elevated platform will run in that direction that they're set out. And they'll keep running until they either run into something or they uh, disappear from your ultimate running out. Every decoy that doesn't fall off will stand on that rock too. So this works in two separate ways. One one, you got a bunch of decoys that are running out in a straight line, right? And it might trip out the enemy be like, oh, whoa, like what's going on, right? And they start shooting all these decoys. You're invisible, which is another, so you can run in the complete opposite direction of all these decoys. It, it, it's much better. I feel like that that's the way his ultimate ability should work just on the regular basis. It is, it's a really good way of using the ultimate. So remember to make sure that you're using his ultimate on an elevated platform because what's better than a one-man bamboozle? A six-man bamboozle. Bamboozle the enemies, boys. Send them all out. 
So while we're talking about specific heroes, I want to talk about Bloodhound because there's a way for you to animation cancel his, his ultimate ability. As you can see right here, it takes a long time to pop his ult. Now, this little secret, this animation cancel is very situational. It depends on where you are and what you're doing and it's not, you're not going to use this all the time, but it may come in handy at some point. I've used it personally. So what you're going to do is you're going to find a balloon, right? If you walk up to the balloon and you start going up the balloon, you can use his ultimate ability while on the balloon and it'll pop instantly. The second you click L1, R1, it'll pop it. There's no animation for it whatsoever. So you can climb the balloon, you can pop it. You can either jump off the balloon or you can go back down to the ground. So like if I was fighting right here, for example, I could pop the ultimate and I could just jump off the balloon and get into the fight right that way there's no way of me getting caught off guard while using my ultimate so like i said very situational but you could find it useful the next thing i want to talk about is doors doors in this game can give you an advantage if you know what you're doing so i have a i have a hypothetical situation set up right here okay so i've got my friend coming and i'm blocking this side of the door pretend he's an enemy if he tries to open the door it's blocked because he can't get it he can't open it because i'm standing there you can break doors if you melee them. So I've got him to break this door, but he's still in the melee animation after he breaks it. So if there's an enemy trying to get into a one-way room and he's trying to break down the door, you can block it with your body. And then you can also plan if he's breaking the door, if he's meleeing it, you can get a couple shots on because he's stuck in the melee animation from trying to break the door. Okay. Now he also sent me this awesome clip. I want to show you guys this. This is hilarious. So What's happening here is he's down, okay? And while he's down, the enemy's trying to thirst him. And what he's doing is, is he's going in and out of this door and he's blocking it. So the guy is trying to thirst him and he keeps going in and out of this door and blocking it from the enemy from opening it. You could use this to your advantage too. Shout out to Ratchet. Thank you so much, Ratchet, for letting me use this, by the way. This is hilarious. I love that. <laughs> this whole clip is just super funny. This guy is continually trying to thirst him and he just keeps moving in and out of the door and closing it and then blocking him from opening it. Obviously, if this was a decent player or he knew what he was doing, he's probably really new. He would just break the door and shoot him if he really wanted to. But, you know... It's just, it's funny. It's just the way you can, you can see what he's doing with the door. He's blocking it with his body so he doesn't get thirsted. So I've got one more hypothetical set up with my friend Ratchet. What you can do when you're running through a door, if a door is closed, you can sprint through it, double tap square, and you'll actually open, then close it behind you. So if somebody is chasing you, you can close a door, run up a wall, and they'll run right through it looking to where you went, and you'll be behind them and you can get a couple shots on. Again, very situational, but I think the main thing to take from that is that if you double tap square while running through an open door, you close it behind you. So if somebody is shooting behind you, you, you might be able to get away. It'll increase your chances of getting away at least. Speaking of that, another example of this is two-story buildings in this game. Most two-story buildings in this game will have a little ledge between the first and second story that you can actually sit on. So hypothetically, if I was getting chased there and I turned the corner, if he was following me and I actually climbed up there, he wouldn't know. Most people would either keep going around the corner or look for a window or something, or even if they do come around that corner, chances are they're not going to look up. It very rarely happens. I've done that quite a bit, and they've never actually looked up on me. So it's just another good technique of, you know, game awareness, map awareness, just a way of getting away. So remember that. If there's a two-story building, you can... S most buildings, not all buildings, you can sit in between the first and second story. There's usually a little baby ledge there that you can stand on. So I've got one last tip for this video, and that's mobility, and that's the sliding and the jumping. There's so much to it, and there's, it's... I could go into detail. I could make a whole video about this, but... To make it very short and brief, if you slide and jump at the peak of a ledge, you will jump farther than if you were to just sprint and jump. So you can maneuver through buildings, you can like parkour buildings way better. There's gaps in this game that you wouldn't be able to make. There's, if you do it off of a hill, you can keep sliding even farther. But just a short example of being able to do this would be like a gap like this, for example. Let's just say I, I, I just sprint and I jump over this. You know, you got that little climb, it's slow. If you slide and then jump, you get like a little speed boost and you can easily clear this gap. Now there's gaps bigger than this, obviously, that you can actually jump over. This isn't the only one. This is just a little example that I found while ro roaming the map to make this video. There's bigger gaps in this. There's buildings that you can go across and doing the sliding and jumping and then sliding again, you can chain your slides. You can go down hills. You can, you know, peaks of roofs. There's so much more to it. It's, it's a very in-depth type of uh type of tip i guess like i said i can make an entire video on that tip alone but just use your imagination when doing it if you're on top of buildings moving around you can do your own thing with it there's like i said there's a million different ways of explaining it 
But sliding and jumping, whether it be off of fences, off of ledges, down hills, whatever it is, make sure you're slide jumping all, basically every time you're jumping, I would say. Unless you're maybe jumping in a gunfight or something like that. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something. I'm going to play the rest of this game out. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you on the next video. Yo, bro, thank you for carrying me, bro. You are that the was actually my champions. first win, thank you. <laughs> 17 kills, bro, are you kidding? Damn. <laughs> Good shit, dude. Good game. <laughs>